Hey everybody, it's Norm from Testin, and for today's episode of Projections, I have a really cool mixed reality demo that I got to try, I wanted to share with you, and hopefully you'll be able to try out as well in the not too distant future. Uh, just last month at the Connect conference, Oculus shared more of what their internal team and some of the developers they've been working with have been doing with their pass-through API. Uh, this is a feature that will soon be unlocked in hopefully many mixed reality applications that you'll be able to use on like the Quest 2 headset. So if you have this headset, you'll know of course that there are uh, these four cameras on the front of the headset that allow for the inside out tracking. That's what allows for the six degrees of tracking so it knows where your body and where your head is at relative to your physical space. But there are also video cameras as well. You know, they're black and white and they're relatively low resolution compared to the like kind of 4K cameras that we're used to watching 16 by nine video in. Uh, but they do let you see a pass-through world and a world in stereo as well. That's what you see when you're setting up your Guardian system, for example. Uh, but so far, developers haven't been able to release applications that allow you to have pass-through video alongside or mix with virtual video or virtual rendered objects and environments, at least not yet. And some of the examples they showed at Connect were really cool demos. For example, anchoring a virtual screen to watch YouTube in your physical space and Oculus has their own mixed reality uh a demo that they'll be releasing next year with like a, a, a rendered pet that will run around your space uh, and the ability for you to tell the system, okay, I have a couch here and a chair here, so please uh, do occlusion for those objects as well. And one of the developers that has been working with this is Unity, the makers of, yes, the Unity game engine. In Unity Labs over the past year, a small team has been working on a piece of software called Unity slices, which is what I got to try out. And it's a it's a social application. So think of it as multiplayer in your VR or mixed reality headset. But unlike, you know, uh, Horizon workplaces or big screen, as opposed to sitting alongside avatars of people that may be all around the world, you're sitting around four people, up to four people are sitting around a square table. And there are two really novel features in Unity slices that separate uh, it from other experiences that I've tried in the past and take advantage of the pass-through API. Uh, the first is the ability to map out an actual table itself to a hard surface. So while in the virtual space, you see about a meter by meter uh, table in front of you, you can actually tell the system using your touch controllers that you're sitting in front of a flat desk, a countertop, a workbench. So that get actually mapped out to the table where if you put your hand on the virtual surface, you'll get the passive haptics of feeling your countertop or your workbench. And that was super neat. You'll be able to see that in the upcoming video. The other really novel feature is that Uni Slices isn't just a purely remote social application. Yes, you can be communicating with three other people wherever they are in headsets around the world. But one thing that's super cool is that because you also have a pass-through compatibility, some of those people can actually be in the very same space with you alone to the very same table and sitting in the place where their avatar would be looking right at you in that pass-through view. And that's what I got to check out a demo of. Unity developer Greg Madison visited our studio, brought a table perfectly sized to that virtual environment, and then we looped in developer Eric Preventure who was checking in remotely, but to my eyes and Greg's eyes, as we were sitting in the room together, we could actually see his avatar in headset. And here's a conversation we had in Unity Slices. So welcome to Unity Slices table. Um, so I, if, one of the fun things that when you start off on this app, uh, I always like to show people is like that sensation of like, if I tap my table, like you can see me like tapping it, right? And there's that yeah. like, tangibility that you like from you hearing me tapping my table and like you tapping your own table they're like we're all sharing the same table and that's the like sense of presence that you don't really get in anything else until you like calibrate like a real world like object in this like shared experience so that's like one of the most magical things i think uh from this so um so yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's let's just uh this is amazing start this up yeah i'm just gonna restart it here just because like having it close off and then reopening like that wow 
really cool like, about that. You say it so casually, Eric, and, and but there are so many things going on here that uh, we haven't had in in AR, uh, VR, MR before. You know, from you know someone remote combined with someone in the same room, that kind of asymmetrical social experience. Um, yeah. In addition to you know these kind of passive haptics of a calibrated table, these are Absolutely. things that we got glimpses of that uh, that Oculus had put in and into their SDK that you guys mm -hmm. are tapping into. Yeah, so um, so what's important to note here is that um, like o Oculus, you know, they give us the hand tracking, they give us the pass through feed, but they're you can consider them just like raw building blocks, right? They're just kind of things that you can use, but there's not really an instruction manual on how to put this all together into a piece like this. And so, you know, we spent a long time, you know, iterating on like our vision. Like Greg's got this vision that you know it's this North Star we're kind of building towards, and this is like a small, you know, a slice of that. Um, but really like, you know, it's been, it's been a long iterative journey on getting here and, you know, building this, this tangibility is like, a, it's like a lot of trial and error, like building these interactions, you know, we had to build everything from scratch here. So, um, but here, one thing that I want to show you as well, while we're here, um, is that if I stand up, right. And then I like peek to the side here, I don't know if you have the mixed reality mode on because that's the real magical part. Yeah. Um, I could slide so, that on right now. Yep. Yeah. So if you turn on the mixed reality mode and I like go around to where Greg is, so like, the, the funny thing is that like I'm on the side here and then you won't see me if you turn on me, you'll see Greg and then I can come back here on the side. <laughs> and then, you know, all of a sudden I'm like in this volume here. Um, and, and it just becomes this like really weird visceral thing that like, you know, the, the person who's in the room just like, it, it almost feels the same, but like, you know, they're not, they're not there, you know, for me. So it's uh it's like a weird experience to, to have that combination. I, I want to communicate that to the people watching. Yeah. Uh, we've seen VR experiences where there have been planes, doorways, for yeah. example, that where you walk through a doorway and there's maybe a bigger space or a different space. You know, uh, but here you describe it as a volume because it's not just this rectangular yes. plane. As I peer around, it really is like a, a, a cube um, or a six yeah. dimensional form where like as a monolith. I, right. <laughs> as I put my head in, it really it, it's you can enter it from multiple sides. Exactly. I guess what I'm yes, trying to right. say. And, and I, Norman, while you're here, I want you to take your hands in front of you and, and slowly put them into the volume and like watch that transformation of your hands happen. Like that's oh, just wow, one of the yeah. things we've been refining for a while. It's it's still ongoing. So uh, this is a work in progress. But like that, that, that tangibility of like having your hands transform into these ghost hands is something mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time kind of working on. And I, I really think it's one of the most magical things of this experience. And so what I'm seeing here of my hand in the, the, the mixed reality view is a reprojection of video on top of geometry. Is exactly that right. Exactly right. Yeah. And but it's it's seamless in the sense that, you know, the, the hand tracking model you'd see in the standard Oculus pass through it gives you enough, I guess, detail in the geometry that where you if you put stereo video over it, it looks just like video. And exactly. It's, yeah. And as you bring oh, it in slowly yeah. <laughs> too, it, it slowly fades out, so you can see your hand just like disappear slowly, and like there's just something crazy about that, you know, like that. Just having your hand go into like transparency and like become a ghost, like uh, it's just it's 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 really my. I still don't get tired of it. <laughs> Greg moving in and out of the, the VR space to the real space gives me. It, it makes me think of the first time I used like a touch controller, and mm -hmm. I could like peer through a headset and see the perfect alignment between the pose of yes. uh, the hand and the po and the virtual representation, except now it's full embodiment. Like yeah, it's alignment absolutely. for head, hands, and then turning that to the AR mode versus the MR mode. That is so trippy and so cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep it in AR mode for now because I, yeah, I like the, the pass through the real space. Yeah, very uh, cool. So what do we have in front of us? So this is a game of chess. So we wanted to start with, um, uh, you know, a game that everyone's familiar with uh, to start with, uh, just to kind of show off this kind of tangible interactions that we're doing. So what's cool with these chess pieces is that uh, you can either uh, pinch them or poke and drag. So you can do one or the other, and, and you can go from one to the other as well. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it's just it's just a board. We wanted to show off that we can build board games like this. And... Uh, there was a lot of iteration on on the shape of these. So in in the talk that I, I gave at Connect, um, we walked through a little bit of the process of getting here. And as you can see, like the, the the pieces on my side are all like fully volumetric. And initially, what we wanted to do was to make these three D pieces that you would go and have the piece kind of collapse under your finger. But mm. we found quickly that uh, you know people trying it 
you know, be, they, they had these bad habits around interacting with them. So as you'd like bring your hand, they would be careful not to hit the wrong one. And, mm. uh, you know, as you kind of bring it down, they wouldn't really understand the interaction or they would kind of poke straight down. And that was really bad for the hand tracking system. You know, it wasn't able to track that as well. So, you know, we ended up on these like flat pieces. And I, I think, you know, it, it ends up being like a quite a nice interaction uh, in the end. So. Where you're kind of training the users to exactly. make the most out of having the passive haptics of a table, as opposed mm -hmm. to, uh, we could of course pinch and grab and recognize those yeah. gestures of the floating cards. Uh, but as you, you know, the, t the board game is a perfect kind of first use case for this because exactly. you have the board uh, and pieces, you can animate them. Like as I move this, you do, you're doing animations, uh, the natural occlusion of the hand, that's really natural there. And it all kind of assists to, so in the future, I would anticipate like pressing and moving things around. Uh, is the most satisfying way to interact with these these objects. Yeah, being able to have that passive haptics just like changes all kinds of things around it. It just makes it really nice. Um, and uh, you know, we you can envision that we're going to try and bring more board games uh, eventually down back to the back to the system. Uh, we have some experiments that we've done internally around like a web browser. You know, how we had this air hockey sample that we tried. Um, but this is the one that's the most like polished, refined uh, that we want people to try off at first. And we just want to show off this interaction model. Um, and give people, you know, like some some ideas on like how to build in this system like this because I don't think there's anything else out there that allows you to interact like this. So. That's really funny, Greg. I saw you move one of these chess pieces. Yes. That's mm -hmm. not my headset recognizing his hands. No. Nope. That's all over nope. network. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But the thing is, because you are right now in augmented reality mode, so when someone is really in the same room as you, you should be uh, in mixed reality. Mm. Like yeah. that, you're gonna have a proper occlusion since it's purely in VR. Look, yeah, I can move that yeah. piece now. Can you confirm, by the way? Your oh, yeah, yeah, sure. My <laughs> yes. There you go. So I can go ahead. And, and that is, I think, the, the most interesting part. As you said, uh, you can also use the tangibility of the the table to map. It, it's like basically like a, a giant iPad, but mm -hmm. the, the iPad is your reality and you can use it to click on things and you're gonna have that haptic feedback that is usually missing with all this augmented reality app or virtual reality apps. Um, yep. And oh, yeah. by the way, if you click also on the timer over there, you're gonna validate your move. So first you have to move and then you can click. Ah, I see. Yeah. So there's multiple <laughs> ways to do that. We wanted to give that like tangibility of people playing traditional chess with the press clock as a way of interacting with it. So like, yeah, do that. And if you don't have a table, you can also bring that surface and put it mm -hmm. in middle hair. This is why you are going to have the possibility to pinch those pieces. Or you can also bring that table and align that uh, area on the floor and that is also a really amazing experience because it's like gathering all your friends around it's like playing in your bedroom and you have all these virtual toys in front of you uh, that yeah awesome. uh one one thing i wanted to bring attention to as well is that um so our interaction system that we've developed here is actually like fully interoperable with controllers and hands so like Folks, folks will will you know we want them to try and use that passive haptics of the hand tracking and and hand just you know provide the best like social affordances you know being able to like you know point at stuff and 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 just like you know naturally talk there's just like an extra sense of presence from being able to use your hands but you know for some people that that do prefer their uh, controllers you can like pull those out so for you like we're still improving on the um, what it looks like for the hands and the avatars but you can actually grab your controllers and. Uh, make a move and, and we have the same poke interactions that you can have with your controllers. Yeah, so you can like right. poke and drag with that. We have the haptics of the controllers in there as well. Um, and so we're trying to like offer people the option of interacting in the way that they feel most comfortable with as well. So we're trying to like define some new types of interactions around the surface here. And if I set the controllers down, uh, it should... Um, automatically revert back to the hand tracking. That's right. Oh, there it goes, yeah. For a second. Yeah, it just takes a second for the Oculus system to shift between the two modes. But yeah, that's absolutely, that's absolutely the case. Um, wow. The controls are also there to recalibrate in case there's some drift. Um, you know, the the, the pass-through, uh, sorry, the presence API, um, I believe that's what it's called. Um, they're, they're adding in anchors eventually until we'll be able to like stabilize things uh, on a specific point. Um, but, you know, for the time being, you know, that's not shipped yet for, for developers. So we're just, you know, making people redo the calibrations. It's quite quick, so it's not a huge issue. But, um, 
Yeah, like over time, you can see this sort of thing become even more seamless, uh, reducing all those friction points of, of you know that alignment process. And um, but yeah, once you have it done, you know it's 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 like an amazing thing of just like merging these two realities together. Yeah, and, and it feels like you know you mentioned things that they had teased at the at Connect, like the Insight SDK, the Presence, the whole Presence platform, which includes things like anchors and for developers like you to create gestures or tap into things. Um, to like you know raycasting on on specific objects, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you're developing the Unity Slices application to be able to use those to leverage those. Um, yeah. So when when anchors happen, that's an idea that you'll be able to lock in and draw boxes around you know recognized guardian within the guardian shapes. Uh, you won't ever need to recalibrate to this table, or it'll, it'll yeah, just do it once and that's it. Do it that's once, right. yeah. Yeah, so we're making it very simple to do it now, as as that's the only way to do it. But yeah, absolutely, we're going to be able to tap in all those features as they come. You know, we're working closely with Facebook on on working on, on all these features and you know with their avatars and and all that such. Um, but yeah, no, we're we're um, we're we're doing everything we can to try and you know like make a great showcase for all this new technology that that you know like we think you know we're able to provide a good platform for all this here um, and and show people like what what are the best ways to do it. You know. What's the capacity in terms of uh, number of users? You designed a, a rectangular table, so four mm -hmm. is a logical number. Is yeah. that just uh, because of network, because of performance, um, because of what? what so, uh, yeah, so I'd say uh, for the time being, you know, we wanted to focus on a simple table shape, you know, with that, um, you know, um, sim symmetry of, of distance and such like that. Um, over the time, we're going to, we have plans to add more table shapes and, and, and add more support for different numbers of users. But, uh, you know, like this, this demo that you're trying is still very early. And, and what we consider it is just a demo. Like it's, it's um, a small slice of where we want to go. Um, but, you know, we're focusing really on the table for now. We want to try and improve this uh, experience, you know. Uh, show off a little bit more of like where we can go with this in terms of content interactions and that social presence, and then over time we'll we'll add these extra features and and bring more to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a long project, you know. We're taking uh, people on the road with us, but uh, yeah, happy to have you along. And and every every lesson learned, like all the things we take for granted, I guess, in the real world, has to be something that's tried and experimented mm -hmm. with. You know, from picking up a chess piece to Know, distance and and how many people like all these things we take for granted I guess in the real world yeah and then the yeah. first goal also of that application is to inspire a developer to start to think about that world where we are going to have multiple experiences living in the same environment because it's not going to have we're not going to have walls between AR VR or whatever everything will exist and coexist in the realm of your perception and that is the first time you can really experience that with uh, augmented reality particles flying like that and having at the same time up here the bubble of reality in which you can enter in and be fully emerged and you can go back and forth, grab those particles in augmented reality and sending them back inside the gap in that bubble of reality. And that is to us really what we want is to inspire people to try to investigate new things. Yeah, all these different ways of blending different realities together. You know, the volume is is such a really you know useful uh, playground. You know, that you can do so much with going in and out. Like we had some early demos we showed off in our talk where there was this portal that you know we like played with, and you look in and you place the portal in, and you can like take the chess pieces out of the portal and like bring them in. And it's this weird thing where you're like bringing stuff back into your reality with you, and and there's just something crazy about that. It it just feels really magical to do. Um, yeah. What other type of, uh, I guess, tabletop experiences are you looking into? There are board games, but yeah. certainly I can imagine, you know, creative applications, drawing, collaboration. I'm sure you guys have thought of this, but what, what are the places that interest you guys most? So, uh, Unity is a gaming company. I mean, a game engine company. So we are focusing a little bit on, on game so far but of course we have planned to expand that to other uh, verticals because obviously while you are all we are all together around the table there is so much stuff to do and actually that is just a pretext to be connected to to each other uh, no matter the distance you can be with physical people as like you said and that is pretty new because Think about it, you can play with anyone on earth, but not the people that are like one meter from you or one feet or foot high. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that is absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, so like we we, we see it as a, 
you know, a useful, it's a useful, like, um, playground for meetings, you know, like playful meetings, you know, that's like the way I like to put it for now. Like we want to give people like things to fidget with, to play with while they're talking to each other and engaging together. Um, as Greg said, it's just a pretext of what you're doing here, but like, you know, the goal is to bring people together and, and having this shared computing experience. So there's all kinds of things we're working on. Like I had mentioned previously, we had this thing, a web browser, shared web experience to, you know, mm. start having like a, you know, a tactile keyboard you can start interacting with to, to, to engage with like, you know, documents together. But, you know, that's like one thing there's, you know, we had this like air hockey game, you know, that was, we were sort of playing with. Those are just like, you know, prototypes. We've got other things, you know, we're sort of planning down the line. But yeah, it's like this is just the first, you know experience to kind of show off these capabilities and there's there's a lot down a lot coming out yeah and, and what part of this are you happy to you know tap into what you know oculus has worked on in terms of avatars and, and prediction and gestures and and what do you want to experiment with yourself um, you know sounds like interaction is a, is a big thing like where are the yeah. places you're happy to use their resources versus if go full full explore on your own yeah. So, so, um, even the avatar is actually an interesting thing. Um, so the avatars as they're shipped right now, they're, they're not really well built to support this kind of uh, shared table experience. Uh, we had to go ahead and modify quite a bit of how their setup is working just to be able to have the hands, you know, properly align with, with where you're touching on the table, like that kind of thing mm -hmm. is not really, it's not suited for that. And, and having this like low latency communication as well is something that, you know, we had to do some work to get to, um, so we're using their tools as, you know, definitely helping us like, get to where we need to be, but we're, we're, we have to put in a lot of work to, to kind of glue the whole thing together. Um, interactions are something we're definitely spending the most energy on just because having this, this ability to touch a table surface and have that like responsive pa passive haptics, that's not something that anyone really builds. Uh, so we have to go ahead and do that ourselves. And, um, you know, our, our goal is to try and build this out to make this like really easy to, to start building content with and then kind of showing off, you know, what these capabilities are and also inspiring people like because I, you know, that's the, the big goal, you know, like really just showing people what's possible and, and hoping that we guide them there. So, Is the hope that other developers who you know, work in Unity will be able to use you know, the, the volume, the table and the fundamentals that you've made so to make their own yeah, tabletop gaming experiences and and or is well, all time in house experiences. Oh, mm, yes. Great, great. Yeah, um, you know, we're we we um, we're right now we're focused on really showing off the demo um, and and fl flushing that out. You know, like just getting here, it takes a lot of work. Um, turning that into something that other people can use is, is even more work. So we're not sure. at the, yeah. any point to talk about that for now. Um, but uh, you know, like we're really working on making this as great as it can be. And uh, going from there, and seeing seeing what people think of it too. You know, like uh, we're excited to have people try it, like yourself. And and the idea is that this will be something that people with a headset with a Quest Two yeah. will be able to try at some point. Exactly right. Yeah, we want to ship this on the App Lab uh, on the App Lab Store for for the moment. Uh, we're not we're not quite at the point of releasing it, but that's something we have in the near term horizon to to release for people. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Craig, Eric. I mean, I, I'm talking to you both seamlessly, and I think that speaks to the success of what you guys have developed so far. Uh, <laughs> my brain has already adapted to seeing a yeah. virtual representation of someone as well as a pass-through representation. Um, but thank you for sharing this demo with me. I can't wait for other Absolutely. people to go try it. Cheers. So hope that made sense. I know it was difficult to illustrate uh, what we were seeing as well as what our physical space looked like. But Greg was sitting next to me to my right and I had the virtual avatar of Eric sitting across from that table. As you can see, we were interacting with that chessboard in front of us uh, as well as toggling between a mixed reality view, a full VR view and a hybrid view with this volume in front of us. And as I stuck my hands into that space uh, or my head into it, I would then be transported into a completely virtual environment. And it was super trippy to poke my head in there and look around, see a completely virtual environment and then pull my head out and then see that black and white pass through video, which was seamless, you know, not only with the latency, but also with the alignment of my physical hands with my virtual hands and the physical and virtual Greg that I saw to my right. Now, all of this is, of course, uh, kind of leading up to the new hardware that I, Oculus talked about. Uh, they'll be showing off next year, Project Cambria, which is going to have 
pass through a video in full color, RGB and higher resolution. And it seems pretty clear to me that one of the things the developers of Unity Slices and other applications that will make use of the pass through API are doing are, you know, getting their feet wet with pass through applications with the Quest 2 now, while there'll be better hardware, faster hardware, more robust pass through hardware with Project Cambria next year. But one of the interesting things that uh, Greg and Eric told me is they believe with their testing uh, that actually the black and white video, that low res video, while it is a little bit blurry and you can't do things like, you know, read a book or uh, really operate a phone while you're in headset, uh, it's still comfortable enough. And I felt that it was comfortable enough for me to interact with a person sitting next to me. Um, and that as you get closer to photorealism with full color, with higher resolution video in headsets uh, and when passed through VR, you actually may approach something like the equivalent of an uncanny valley between that video with the rendered objects. And to have something that's a little more contrasty or to have a bigger difference between the rendered space and the uh, pass through video space actually works to uh, that advantage of believability and comfort. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually going to be the case. That's going to, we'll have to try that out when Project Cambria and other pass through headsets uh, come out next year. But certainly interesting interesting to think about from a user and developer standpoint. Regardless, I'm really excited for them to continue work on Unity Slices. And as they said, it will be hopefully out in the near future uh, in the App Lab. So stay tuned. I'll include links below to where you can learn more and follow this project uh, so you can try it out when it comes out. But thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.